Tolkien put a lot of effort into creating his world and explaining every detail, but he also put a bit of mystery into his world, some parts that make you curious and are open for interpretation. We recently left the Shire and Buckland in my in-depth film and books differences and references series and entered the old forest. If you haven't seen it, the playlist is in the description. This video is however not part of this series. Small side note, I try to pronounce names as Tolkien described it, so prepare for a lot of rolled R's. The old forest is a mysterious place. We have Old Man Willow, which is a mysterious tree entity and the forest itself seems self-conscious. It's described as full of hate and the willow seems to be a reason or origin of this hate for the walking things. In the books, Frodo, Sam, Merry and Pippin, after leaving the Shire, decide to travel through the old forest to avoid the Nazgul, who will probably look for them on the east road. After straying a bit through the forest on their ponies, the hobbits get closer to an old willow and feel suddenly very sleepy, a motive we know a bit from Mirkwood and the enchanted river in The Hobbit. In the old forest we have a river nearby too, but the source of the sleepiness is not the water, but the mysterious tree called Old Man Willow, who puts a spell upon the hobbits. Merry and Pippin fall asleep at the tree's trunk and Frodo sits down on a root, putting his feet into the water and falls asleep too, with Old Willow knocking him into the water. Only Sam can resist the spell, saving Frodo and pulling him out of the water. Merry and Pippin are pulled down into the trunk of the tree through a crack. This scene is referenced in the Two Towers film in Fangorn Forest instead. Sam and Frodo think of a way to rescue their friends but can't find one. They try to make a fire and burn the tree but that just makes him more angry and he begins to squash the trapped hobbits. Sam puts out the fire and Frodo runs a bit further into the forest crying for help. And if all this wasn't strange enough, now a strange man with a blue jacket, yellow boots and a hat with a feather appears and is singing strange songs. Quote from the Lord of the Rings. Hey doll, merry doll, ring a dong dillo, ring a dong hop along, fell lel the willow, tom bomb jolly tom, tom bombadillo. Imagine two of your best friends are slowly getting killed by a mysterious tree entity and encountering this guy. It would be a weird situation in of itself but probably also don't fill you with confidence. The song has something childlike if this is the right word. Only a child would not see the danger and walking carelessly and singing through such a dangerous and evil forest. Frodo and Sam confront the man and ask him for help and indeed he does save Merry and Pippin in time, even without making haste, by just talking and singing to the tree. It seems his words and songs have power over the world he lives in. And here the hobbits met him, Tom Bombadil. If you haven't read the books and only seen the films, this might be a character you have heard about. He is sadly not in the films and today we will look further into the question, who or what is Tom Bombadil? The short answer, we don't know for sure and I could say thank you for watching now, but we will look into several theories and their arguments for this episode. Old Man Willow has the ability to cast a sleeping spell, which is relatively strange inside the world too, but not unheard of. For example, the legendary elf maid Luthien was able to sing even a powerful entity into sleep. However, it's still not clear what exactly that tree is. Maybe an ant or probably a huorn, which are more tree-like ants. What supports this? The old forest was once part of a gigantic forest that was connected with Fangorn. So some assume the trees of the old forest are horns and ants too. As mentioned in my books and film differences and references series, I think in episode 3, there's a dialogue inside an inn of the Shire where Sam explains that his cousin Hell saw a walking tree in the north moors. So it's possible that ants live around and inside the old forest. 
In very early drafts of The Lord of the Rings, published in the History of Middle-earth book The Return of the Shadow, we find that Tom Bombadil and Old Man Willow are very old concepts and that Old Willow is described as a grey, thirsty, earthbound spirit that had become imprisoned in the greatest willow of the forest. It's however not mentioned how that happened. Also, how canon this is can be for sure debated, because it's not in the Lord of the Rings anymore. But it gives us an interesting hint that there are earthbound spirits in the world of Tolkien. Old Man Willow and in my opinion even Goldberry and her mother, the so-called river woman, could be spirits like this, just good ones. Even Tom Bombadil could be a nature spirit, we come to this later. We also see how Tom, his wife and nature are somehow connected. They seem to care about the plants and creatures living in the forest. For example, he carries some white water lilies and puts them down on the grass very carefully before rescuing the hobbits. Tolkien describes this very detailed. But let us look a bit further into the story we find in The Lord of the Rings. After saving the hobbits, Tom Bombadil invites them to his house, where also strange things happen. For example, Tom Bombadil can take the one ring, even putting it on his finger, but does not become invisible and the one ring does not affect him at all. It's just a ring for him. When Frodo puts on the ring and becomes invisible, Tom can still see him, while his friends can't. After they rested at the house of Tom and his wife Goldberry for some time, the hobbits leave but get too close to the Barrow Downs and are almost killed by Barrow Whites, which are also mysterious evil spirit beings, once summoned by the Witch King to these old graves of kings and lords of Arnor, or Cardolan to be precise. Frodo can resist the spells of the Barrow Whites and sings a song that Tom had taught the hobbits in case they are in trouble. Ending the song, Tom appears and crashes through the wall of the barrow, frees the hobbits and bends the barrow whites from Arda into nothingness with his powerful songs. It's such a weird part of the story but makes it incredibly memorable and mysterious. Tom seems to have immense power, at least comparable to the power of Sauron, if not surpassing him, because the ring does not affect him at all. Like they are not compatible. Tolkien even inverted the effect the ring usually has, you could say. Quote, Tom laughed again and then he spun the ring in the air and it vanished with a flash. Frodo gave a cry and Tom leaped forward and handed it back to him with a smile. Tom played with the ring and even did a little magic trick with it, made the ring vanish while he stayed visible putting the ring on his finger a few moments ago. In his hands and his realm it does not seem dangerous anymore but outside of Tom's realm this ring changes the fate of Middle Earth. Gandalf, who is a Maya, basically an angel of lower rank, reacts quite differently to the One Ring. Quote, Gandalf's eyes flashed and his face was lit as by a fire within. Do not tempt me, for I do not wish to become like the Dark Lord himself. Yet the way of the ring to my heart is my pity. Pity for weakness and the desire of strength to do good. Do not tempt me, I dare not to take it, not even to keep it safe unused. This is a heavy contrast to what Tom Bombadil does. To me it seems that Tom is probably one of the most powerful entities in Middle Earth. But how is this possible and what is he? Goldberry gives an interesting answer. Quote, he is, said Goldberry, staying her swift movements and smiling. Frodo looked at her questioningly. He is as you have seen him, she said in answer to his look. He is the master of wood, water and hill. Then all this strange land belongs to him? No indeed, she answered, and her smile faded. That would indeed be a burden, she added in a low voice as if to herself. The trees and the grasses and all things growing or living in the land belong each to themselves. Tom Bombadil is the master. No one has ever caught old Tom walking in the forest, wading in the water, leaping on the hilltops under light and shadow. He has no fear. Tom Bombadil is master. We also learn that Tom is very old and he is also called the fatherless by Elrond during the council. Tom says about himself, 
I am old, eldest, that's what I am. Mark my words, my friends. Tom was here before the river and the trees. Tom remembers the first raindrop and the first acorn. He made paths before the big people and saw the little people arriving. He was here before the kings and the graves and the barrow whites. When the elves passed westward, Tom was here already before the seas were bent. He knew the dark under the stars when it was fearless before the Dark Lord came from outside. And Gandalf explains during the council, He would not have come, said Gandalf. Could we not still send messages to him and obtain his help? Ask Erestor. It seems that he has a power even over the ring. No, I should not put it so, said Gandalf. Say rather that the ring has no power over him. He is his own master, but he cannot alter the ring itself nor break its power over others. And now he is withdrawn into a little land within bounds that he has set, though none can see them, waiting perhaps for a change of days, and he will not step beyond them. It seems Tom is outside the concept of good and evil or the world. He is his own master and not a servant of the Valar. Also, the old forest is quite evil and has hatred for everything that walks freely. Old Willow, as evil spirit, seems to spread his hatred through the forest, but Tom is unaffected by this and a strong contrast to it too. He has authority, but is not, so to say, owner of the forest and he and his nature seem to be outside of this conflict and hate. He doesn't really fit into the forest. Some interpret Tom as a carnation of the reader or Tolkien himself inside the book. There are also some parallels between the nearby regions. The Shire is an anachronism and does not fit into the rest of the world's time, which is more ancient or medieval, while the Shire is more Victorian, so much more advanced in comparison to the rest of the world. The old forest, similar to Fangorn, seems to be nature in a very early, untouched and mythological state, while Tom inside it is another sphere that does not really fit into the world or the forest and its hatred. And east of this are the cursed Barrow Downs, where the Barrow Whites live, which are very mythological evil ghost beings that also don't really fit into the world. They feel like exceptions that represent mythology of an ancient curse. Geographically, all three places are right to each other and Fangorn was once connected with the old forest, which is in my opinion no coincidence. The name Bombadil is Old Bucklandish. Its exact meaning and origin is not known. Some assume it's Celtic. Elves, dwarves and men have other names for him and their translations always include ancient and the elves one also fatherless. Some also see a connection to the Celtic other world and I can see some parallels. In all of those texts and descriptions we find many little hints on what Tom might be in Tolkien's world so that all kinds of different theories exist. His age in Tolkien's mythology is also a strange one. Quote, he knew the dark under the stars when it was fearless before the Dark Lord came from outside. This could mean that he was there even before Melkor, the first Dark Lord, entered Arda and he entered it with the other Ainur. Actually, Melkor was very eager to go there because he wanted to dominate the creation of Eru, that is God, and entered first. Some might also interpret the sentence before the Dark Lord came from outside as the time after the Vala Tulkas came during the so-called First War and Melkor fled from Arda beyond the walls of night into the void. He would then later return and attack the creation of the other Valar, the angels of highest rank again, which is what Tom could mean. What makes this plausible is that Arda was a great mess after the first war, where nothing grew and it took the Valar and their servants, the Mayar, a long time to repair it and form it further. Whatever interpretation is true, Tom lives on Arda for a very long time and is rightfully called the eldest. To summarize what we have learned so far about Tom, he is potentially as old as Arda itself. He is very powerful, at least inside his realm, which is the old forest. 
He is power lays in his words and especially his songs. He seems connected to nature. He also seems to be outside the concepts of good and evil inside of Tolkien's world and is, you could say, neutral. The ring has no power over him, but he can't undo it either. He also seems to have vast knowledge about the world and he can see the unseen. So what's the conclusion? Who or what is Tom Bombadil? He can't be elf or man and there are several theories. One that seems unlikely from my perspective is that Tom Bombadil is a manifestation of Eru himself, which is God. In this case it seems strange that he can't alter or destroy the One Ring or why he doesn't understand how dangerous it is for all other beings in Middle-earth. If Gandalf understands his nature, he would also talk a bit differently about him during the council. He even explains that in the end Tom Bombadil will fall, last as he was first, when Sauron has conquered everything. So this makes no sense. A more likely theory, he is an Ainu, so one of Eru's spirit beings or angels and maybe one of the Valar or maybe only a Maya like Gandalf. He lives with his nature related wife Goldberry, so maybe he is Aule and Goldberry is Yavanna, queen of earth and Aule's wife. But those two Valar live in Aman and Aule seems not really fitting for Tom Bombadil because he is the smith of the Valar. Even though all Ainur can sing, I don't see Tom as a blacksmith in his true nature. Another high angel that often visited Middle-earth and some rivers is Ulmo, king of the sea, but I don't see this either. Why should the king of the sea live in a forest, totally disconnected from his seas and the world? Ulmo was one of the first Valar to intervene in the war of the elves against Melkor, so he doesn't seem very neutral to me. Being a Maya seems more plausible, but here we have three problems. He is not affected by the One Ring, as explained earlier, and he was potentially there before the Ainur came to Arda. It would probably work with a second interpretation of his age, because at this time some of the Maya already entered Arda. The third problem is that he is neutral and not part of the good and evil concept we often find with those entities. He seems not to care that the world is marred and he does not actively fight against Sauron. It seems more that he is beyond that conflict. All the other Maiar who entered Middle-earth have a clear position, either on the side of Melkor or later Sauron or against them. Even Osse, a Maya of Ulmo, was ensnared by Melkor for a short time, but his wife Uinen brought him back to the loyalty of Ulmo and the other Valar. So this seems pretty unusual for a Maya to not have a side and be neutral because they are the servants of the Valar. Now we come to the two theories I like most. There is another group of spirit beings beyond the Mayar that have no specific name and are probably nature related. It's not even clear if they are counted towards the Ainur. Let's call them nature spirits or sprites. I would broaden this concept a bit and include even beings like Ungoliant, which is Shelob's mother and a spirit being that took the shape of a giant spider, but in its true nature represents darkness itself that wants to devour everything. I think Ungoliant is a very good example because we know that she was initially quite neutral and even in a later alliance with Melkor, she does only care about her nature of devouring everything. In this sense she is a neutral entity and she was also very powerful, almost devouring Melkor himself in the end. I would count Goldberry and the River Woman towards nature spirits too. Both seem to be spirits of water or a specific river. Tolkien wrote about Goldberry that she represents the actual seasonal changes in these riverlands according to letter 210. I like the idea that Tom's nature is similar and that he maybe represents a specific part or concept of the nature of this forest, wood, water and hill. 
A parallel I see, nature does what it wants. When men take space away from it and for example build a city, nature will always try to get the space back. When a city gets abandoned and nobody takes care anymore, nature will slowly take it back and regain its authority. Tom is master and also does what he wants in his own borders too. The hobbits of Buckland for example defended against the old forest and created a barrier in form of a giant hatch so that the old forest could not grow into Buckland. Even in the most barren places of earth you can find life which seems to never give up. I think this is an aspect that Tom could represent. A theory I really like too is that Tom is a spirit of the music of the Ainur. Originally Eru and his so to say angels made music together through which he ultimately created the universe and Arda. This music of creation is called the music of the Ainur. I like the theory that Tom Bombadil is a weird manifestation or aspect of it that formed an own entity. This would fit well to the fact that Tom sings all the time and he can change the world through his song. Of course, as explained in my The Nature of Magic video, words and song represent the most powerful form of magic in Tolkien's world. And even elves like Finrod or Maiar like Sauron have used this too, but the circumstances and scenes with Tom still seem to be very outstanding. In addition, this would explain his age and timelessness too, because the music outlined the vision of Arda and led to its creation and so he can be there even before Melkor entered from outside. It would also explain his neutrality and why he is not affected by the ring or the darkness and hatred of the forest because he is basically beyond all those things. It must also be considered that the music itself just outlined the world and it was through the will of Eru that it became reality. Still, in the music lies some authority through this, so that Tom is master and has authority but can't ultimately change fate related things like the One Ring or bring new things into existence. The downside of this theory is that there are no real connections or precedents for it. Well, I think it's very plausible. Its core is just an assumption, where in contrast we for example find other weird spirit beings mentioned in Tolkien's world, so the core of that idea already exists. However, I have to admit that I personally like the theory the most, because song is a big part of what Tom Bombadil is and I love the idea of him being an entity of song himself. All these are still just fan theories and I think it is fun to think about them and to find arguments but in the end there is no true answer to this question except one. Tolkien wanted to create his own mythology and bring his readers minds into a different world full of adventure, lore and wonder. Mythology often tries to explain certain values, concepts and ideas to its culture and sometimes it also wants to explain the parts of the world that people don't understand or can't explain themselves yet. How the mountains were formed, where we are from or how the world was created and even today with all our knowledge and science we don't fully understand everything. We often hit details inside of details that seem enigmatic to us for some time. We also find this in mythology where at a certain depth things are just there or very vague and the question what was before that can't be answered anymore. At this point we have the mystery, the unknown like Tom Bombadil and I think the unknown is what drives us as humans and makes things interesting because we are curious. Thank you for watching. Even though the video got far shorter in the end than I expected, I think I covered the topic quite well. I could have discussed more theories but decided to just present a small famous selection. If you have another theory feel free to post it in the comments. I maybe should have mentioned the adventures of Tom Bombadil poem, but it does not add too much to the main question. Only how Goldberry pulled him into the water by grabbing his beard and then a day later they got married and the creatures of the forest attended. We also have the part with Old Man Willow capturing Tom inside his trunk and Tom just commanded him to let him free, which he did immediately. Funny little stories inside a poem. And now I have mentioned them too. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, feel free to press the like button, leave a comment and in case you subscribe, consider pressing the annoying bell for notifications. I will continue with law videos, not sure on the topic though. In the meantime, you can check my other law videos. For example, I always recommend my books and films differences and references series. I also think about pushing this series further so The Hobbits finally reach Brie after 130 minutes of content so it's very detailed. Amazon also announced Juan Antonio Bayona as director for the first two episodes of the Lord of the Rings related Amazon series. If there are some more news, I'll make another little update video. I'm also thinking about continuing the answer law questions from the comment series or another video about interesting places of Middle Earth. You can also post law questions in the comments if you want. I read and answer almost everything. And maybe you noticed that I finally pronounced the word realm correctly in this video and I'll probably forgot about it again when I make my next video. Again, thank you for watching and goodbye.